Maybe a rabbit or two, Ben. We'll see how things uh, end up panning out on Cloud Kingdom. In the bottom left corner from Team Gamma Bears, we have the th most famous Taiwanese StarCraft II player. Whenever he plays, thousands of people are tuning in to watch him. It's Sen. And over in the top right from Team MVP, the Red Protoss up and coming, having his first GSL Code S season for 2012, in fact, in all of his history, it's Finale. Now, uh, when I was really young, Ben, I remember my sister tried to get into magic tricks and magic shows. And this is a very famous video that my sister shows every other Christmas. It's a video of her trying to pretend like she pulls a rabbit out of a hat. Does she actually have a rabbit? Yes. Like, no, no, not, not a real rabbit. It's like a fake doll rabbit. But it's supposed to be like you pull the rabbit out of the box and like it's supposed to be anywhere. She shows the box. Nothing's in it. And then like she she, she taps on it. says like abracadabra. And then like a, and then she's supposed to open the box and the rabbit's there. So she's supposed to basically make the rabbit appear out of nowhere. But I remember the, the 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 first time that my sister did it, she like made me her magician's like assistant, assistant right? Like everyone has an assistant, except I'm four years old, so I really don't know what I'm doing. So all I do is just kept running circles around the entire set, like look at me, look at me, look at me, and then at the very end, like my sister's uh, this is, like the yeah, biggest see. trick, misdirection. <laughs> the biggest trick that my sister was trying to do was his rabbit thing, and. Uh, at the very end, she was like, all right, now for, for my final trick. And she's like, Daniel, I need you to stop running. And I'm like, okay. So I go to the back, and I, s and I start knocking on the, the, the box. I'm like, anybody home? Anybody home? And I don't know why, but this is all on video, and it's super embarrassing. I'm watching it every other Christmas. And at the very end, my sister finally reveals a rabbit. And she's like, look, how did it get there? And then I say on the video, you put it there when no one was looking. <laughs> And then uh, my sister started crying. And no! She, she did! And this is all on video. She makes me watch it every other Christmas, you I swear. You ruined your or sister's every magic trick, man. That's so mean. I know. And, uh, this just reinforces the notion, Dan. <laughs> that I'm the meanest caster? <laughs> that you are the meanest caster at the North American Starling. Uh, now, I know most viewers would probably think it's me because I am kind of a jerk. But it is, in fact, you're Dan. Just a, you're just an indoctrinated patriot. That's right. I'll vote for that guy. <laughs> uh, I don't know. The reason why I'm telling you is because we're talking about rabbits out of a hat. And that's the kind of <laughs> scenario that Finale will need. If, I mean, now, that's that's kind of the tough thing too, right? I think we should also go ahead and tell everybody at home that the, the upside to that, uh, that Frodan kind of BMing his sister during the magic trick is that she did put a huge gash in your forehead. Yes! <laughs> So she uh. had it coming. <laughs> it's only fair, right? Frodan she splits has my like cranium and I ruin her magic show. Frodan has this like gnarly Hollywood scar on his forehead like he uh, like he got in a knife fight or something. It's actually just from his sister. <laughs> Playing tag. Or trying to play tag. But uh, it's actually, it used to be really severe when I was young. Like you can notice it, but now it's kind of faded off and it's, it's kind of like blurred in. Scars, they fade away. But chicks dig them, right? Yes, I even let them touch it sometimes if they ask. We see uh, a, a little bit of a zealot stalker poke here, very standard out of a uh, Korean Protoss player. They like being a little bit aggressive with the early zealot stalker, maybe able to p force a little bit more Zerglings than normal, which is nice. What will Finale do here, man? Once again, he's gone Robo. We know he likes to uh, to play aggressively against Zerg and Cloud Ooh, Kingdom. Is he gonna get the queen? <laughs> oh, stalker. Uh, Cloud Kingdom is—is is it a good map for a mortal? Well, I mean, it's—it's it's, it's more narrow than Daybreak, and it's shorter than Daybreak. So, if there was—if there was to be like a repeat of uh, of game one, this would be a good place for it. We see Twilight Council going down though, which I guess is still the same as the last one, right? Uh, no. Last time he did not go Robo. He just went for a raw seven eight gates with the first three Immortals that was chronoed out. Uh, the one thing that was interesting is that Finale pushed a little bit later with the in the previous game because he waited for an Observer and then a War Prism after his third Immortal. Normally you just go straight for it, that way Zerg doesn't have enough production. And that Sen was able to stall for time, which was a great move by Sen. One, two, three, four, five, and six gate. Blink Stalker with a couple of Immortals supporting. Uh, I think he's just going to wait for plus two and then push with Blink Stalker Immortals. Um, a, a similar 
kind of two base all in to what we just saw and maybe a little bit more vicious. Definitely very punishing if you don't engage perfectly. Yes, especially if you allow Protoss to get into like a nice little alleyway over here. It can be very devastating. Blink Stalkers can really manipulate the space. Uh, and, and Sen has to be very cautious about that. Now Sen does see no third base. Uh, and he also scouted, I, I think he scouted the Twilight when, with his Overlord before it died. Yeah, so he knows that uh, his opponent's build range possibilities. But now we see Finale, uh, well he's looking like he wants to take a third base, but you can't always trust what you see then. Cloud Kingdom not a bad map for taking the third base though. It's uh, pretty it's easy to wall off with, uh, oh. with with good building placement. And he actually is going to go ahead and throw down that third Nexus, so I guess the uh, the Blink, the Immortals, all just for a greater defensive purpose. Yes, and that's uh, I like this option uh -oh. a lot better. A big flank possibility though, and Finale not paying attention. Oh, uh, those are good force fields. Those are good force fields, but a lot of sentries still uh, very exposed to this Zergling aggression. Ling's going to pick up a few sentry kills, going to kill Krog. Might even pick off this pylon before they dart out of there. No, they're going to take off a bit early. Uh, it wasn't as fruitful for Sin as I thought it might nah, be. If you look at resources really well lost, done. it was an, a, a good exchange for Finale. The force field is really turning that around there. Uh, Sin is going to go ahead and drop an infestation pit in preparation for the, the late game. Yes, uh, transition to Infestors. When you see Robo Gateway, Infestors dominate that composition, especially sentry based. Now, well, something that's kind of cool is that we're seeing a, a, a robotics bay from Finale. Now, normally we see more mortals, we see more gateways, and then uh, maybe we see a quick plus three squeezed out, but we see a, a transition into Colossus, especially with so many Zerglings scouted. Uh, I think Finale th uh, feels like his opponent might be going Fester Ling, but we all know that he's going Roaches. Yeah. Uh, Pathogen Glands on the way right now for Sin. As that uh, Infestor tech is ever so close. Fourth base already building for the Taiwanese Zerg. 120 supply against about 129 supply. Very close game right now. If we look at the income tabs, we can see that Sin does have a drone lead, but not much of one. 74 to 63. And really, Finale's not going to want too many more probes than he already has. This is a, a pretty good number. We might see him go up to 70, maybe. But he's in a good spot. Transitioning into Colossus Tech. This is a very straightforward PvZ that we're seeing. Yes. And, I mean, some people feel comfortable getting double Roboak to make sure they have a big Colossus push. Uh, think TT1 versus Stefano. Just have a three Colossus push would be really strong to clear up most of what Zerk has. Uh, but this is a nice way to harass while buying time for the closet to come out. Now, Sten should be able to fend it off very easily. Cloud Kingdom, a map, compared to like a map like uh, like Ohana, is really difficult to, to penetrate on Ohana because... Or sorry, it's difficult to defend on Ohana because you have all your expansions spread out. But everything's in a triangle formation. That will allow Sten to cover his bases easier. Single Warp Prism is really tying up all of Sten's attention right now. His entire army is sort of following it, hoping to... Uh Hoping to deal with Maybe those zealots that are inside. Trying to worship the war prison. Ooh. Mm. The claw. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have saved our lives. We are eternally grateful. I was talking to Apollo the other day. We had the funniest conversation. Uh, a lot of uh, Korean Zergs are starting to use Neural Parasite to kill war prison harass. And... Uh, why? Actually, this story I'm is going to have to be on. Going to hang on for a oh, second. Oh, Carl, how are you going to see? This is a good story. <laughs> it's it's going to be good, but we do have Whoa, uh, we do have gameplay developing here. We see a two Colossus push, no third Colossus. He's going to go behind the base. Uh, Sen moving his units like he wants to counterattack and really force the issue. Look at the Sim City from Finale. He's got some interesting cannon here. A blink on the lower ground. The, uh, the investor's trying to lock it down with fungals, but the Colossus is doing a great dam uh, deal of damage. And the Immortal Sen not sending his units for a counterattack either. And Finale finally starting to warp in units. Uh, this fourth base from Sen will drop, and Finale. Uh, wow, these yeah. cannons doing an awesome job. Pretty successful aggression from Finale as he mounts a nice defense back at home. Cannons do ultimately all fall, uh, but Finale has a lot of gateways to warp in with and money to spare at the same time. This push still alive on the other end of the map, but spine crawlers have been repositioned, and it's going to be very difficult to push into spines from this low ground. Uh, Colossi going to come forward and try to chip away, but he's got to be so very careful not to overextend. Uh, this third base from Finale is going to drop. That's going to be a very painful loss considering Sen has uh, everything he can max out already. He's got uh, he's got 
200-200, and Finale is very deeply supply block. Yeah, Finale basically relegated to two bases is going to have to figure out what he wants to do here. Does he go all in, or does he continue to try and make something happen? He is getting the uh, the Stargate, so it looks like he is thinking Mothership. Yeah, getting a Mothership out would be very helpful, of course, just to combat things, but, I mean, does he even have the ability to support the Mothership? Uh, when you get Mothership, you want some Archons, you want more Stalkers, you want the ability to kind of zone and use yeah. the Vortex correctly. And you do need three or four bases really to sustain yeah. all of that. Uh, Finale is going to send his army back home, and I do think that gives me time to tell my story finally. <laughs> so what happened between so you and So I was talking Apollo. to me and Apollo, or to Apollo and I were talking about how Korean players, Axlav was also taking part in this conversation. Um, and he's been casting a lot of the Kespa pros, right? Uh, working, working for MLG. He's talking about how he's really impressed with how some of the Kespa players are really changing the game. They're using Neural Parasite to defend War Prism. War Prism very uh, frustrating sometimes because it comes in and you have to either drop a bunch of infested Terrans and fungal it. Uh, and he's like, but the Kespa pros have realized you can just Neural it, fly it over a Spore Crawler. They can't warp in while the infested Terrans are doing the damage. They can't do anything at all. And they just lose it. And then Apollo is like, oh, wow. Uh, and then while you control the uh, while you control the warp prism, you could just float it over and pick up a Colossus, and then fly the Colossus over a uh, over a spore crawler as well, which you know reminded me of the Claw from Toy Story. So <laughs> you're controlling the, uh, the prism and just grab the Colossus. Goes like, Woo! So I don't think you can pick up you other units that don't belong no, to you. <laughs> you, you, you can. That was oh, Apollo. That was the joke. And he was he was kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's it, it was it was it was really funny at the time, guys. If if, if y'all aren't laughing with me, then it's just because I don't um, have the funny English accent. I'm laughing right now, out. man. I'm with you. Lol. Um, we see the warp prism now moving across the middle of the map, trying to meet up with the army. You can do a little bit of harassment. Sen does not have neural parasite, so we can't really deal with it that way. But I would like to see that be done. It'd be kind of cool. Nero doesn't seem to have uh, that many other applications other than that and, well, the Mothership Defense. Is anyone laughing, Ben? I saw you checking chat. Nope, nobody's laughing. <laughs> well, now I'm laughing. <laughs> we see, now we see that Finale is taking a fourth base very aggressively. And Senza uh, is just sitting back and making Broodlords. He's gotten eight thus far and he's starting to incorporate more. He's getting plus one flyer upgrades instead of the uh, carapace. We've been seeing Zergs go for carapace to make their blues more durable. But instead, going for plus one attacks. Hmm. That's interesting. Don't you think, Ben? Wouldn't you agree? Yes. I concur. Yeah. You concur. That's like, uh, that's what the mothership says. I concur. Does it? Yeah. When does it say that? Like, whenever you tell him to, to move, it's like, defense system's failing! And I'm like, well, just Vortex then! <laughs> and then it says, I concur? <laughs> no, when you tell her to move across the, the map, it's just like, I concur. And I'm like, oh. A little bit of Zealot Harass down in the bottom right-hand corner of the map as uh, Sin trying to establish a new base. It's going to be at least momentarily delayed. At the same time, Finale's trying to secure his own base. He's got that Nexus up. He's got cannons down. He has a big army there to, to defend it. So Sin's not going to be able to do much about that. He's instead going to take 9 o'clock. Uh, interesting situation unfolding here as we've got that typical late game Zerg army and this very typical late game Protoss army. And, and it's really going to come down to the mothership. It's going to come down to um, the engagement. And it's really going to come down to whether or not Sin makes a mistake because this Broodlord Infester ball. Uh, when controlled perfectly, as we have seen time and time again, is uh, it's, it's just incredibly difficult for Protoss to deal with in a cost-effective manner. Yes, uh, it's very difficult for Protoss to approach the ball. Although, I do like Finale's uh, just his response. Just get Storm, get War Prism Speed, get Charge. Do whatever you can to harass, get Templars out. Storm is pretty useful in terms of zoning off the Infestors from being able to get too far, especially when you combine Storm with the ability to feedback right afterwards. Infestors almost die instantly. It's uh, it's very nice. Now, we see that Sen is taking another aggressive expansion. While there's nothing really that that Finale can do, he's just waiting to get a big bank. But so is Sen. It's just a question of who's going to attack first, if, e if ever. If ever. Who do you think will attack first, Ben? I think, um, I think Zerg will attack first. 
I think Finale will attack first. I think they're just going to end up expanding into each other, and th that they're just going to inevitably have to fight. <laughs> uh, they'll fight over this right-hand expansion, probably. Something like that. Uh, Sin is actually mobilizing a little bit. Corruptors and Broodlord is going to press out, take away some of Finale's vision, shut down this Zelnaga Tower. Um, I think I, I suspect that we will see Sin do this very methodically. He's probably going to push forward with his creep, with his spine crawlers. But uh, I kind of think the onus is on the Zerg player here. Yeah, uh, I mean, Sen doesn't really want Protoss to stack the energy, but now, like, how can he really approach Protoss? If he gets uh, things out of position and the, he doesn't split correctly, he loses everything. Uh, a little War Prism drop, uh, trying to take out this base, but Sen does defend it. Meanwhile, Finale uses the get position. But there's a lot of spine crawlers. You can't attack up here, Ben. Yep, a tough spot to be in if you are Finale. It's a great defensive position for Sin. He's got a fantastically scary-looking army here. A lot of Broodlords. Actually, the Broodlord count, guys, is 12. Six Corruptors, 17 Infestors. Infestor is um, kind of the the unit that has defined ZVP recently. Uh, Nor Parasite is finishing up for Sin, so he can always threaten to grab that mothership, land a vortex against it. Yeah, what can you really do if you're uh, Finale unless your opponent kind of moves a little bit too far? Sen even spread out his units so much, can't really do much about it. Meanwhile, Finale expanding to the top left while still running by at the bottom right. Gonna pick off his base. Uh, but I mean, Sen has, is already maxed. He can just remake that hatchery and just wait for it to keep banking. Yep, it's not gonna bother him too terribly much. He's got a lot of money already, 3,000 minerals, 2,000 gas just sitting in the bank. And uh, really all that we're going to see Sin do is just going to build spine crawlers. He's going to replace the drones, and he's going to build more spine crawlers, and he's going to replace the drones. He doesn't have a whole lot of reason to do anything else at this point because his army is about as strong as it's going to get. <laughs> I would love if he did that. And then Finale just killed his own units and made carriers. And I said that. The whole forest of spine crawlers. But nothing would ever happen from it. Once upon a time, there was a <laughs> game played much like that. In uh, EPS, it was a very funny game. Uh, Sen again, just taking it very slowly. He is inching closer, ever so closely to the Protoss army. Ever so closely. Inch by inch. One inch at a time. If you add up all or, those inches. Uh, or meters, or centimeters. The difference on between centimeters. winning and losing. Starcraft is a game of inches. <laughs> now Finale I can't is go out and do it for you, Sen. <laughs> Finale is going to be the guy that acts oh. first. Action is on uh, Finale. He does get a couple fungals off. Ooh, the Corruptor. Getting a little bit too anxious. Although the Broodlord. The one Corruptor. Oh, the Neuro. The Neuro Parasite. Whoa. Whoa. That is a very long range Neuro. My goodness. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't move it too far. You're going to lose control Where of it, Sen. Whoa. Oh, 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 he catches oh, it again. he's going to get it again. Is he oh, going to land another Vortex? Oh, but he feedbacks it. Uh, no, he, uh... Where'd I think, the other I think, uh, I think Finale feedbacks the Mothership. Oh. Reactively. Wait, no, he has full shields, though. How does he only lose 330 shields from that? I don't know. Where'd the other hydrogen energy go? I, we watched that entire thing. That's actually kind of crazy. But Sen now has the knowledge that the Mothership is no longer really uh, a threat. A threat, yeah. Feedbacks. He's gonna, he's gonna push back in a big way. Finale's landing some good feedbacks, but uh, this Broodlord ball is very, very scary at this point in the game. Sin completely maxed out. Trying to remax on Corruptors, so he's building one. <laughs> he's got five, though. So uh, he's gonna try to squeeze out as much anti-air as possible to deal with it. The Infested Terrans slowly closing in. The supplyless army, very intimidating for any Protoss to kind of confront. Archons are going forward. Here comes those Blink Stalkers. Finale has no more space. The storm underneath, they're gonna force the Brutalors to move back, which is nice. Uh, but the Infested Terrans doing so much DPS. The deeps, Ben. Yeah, this base is definitely gonna end up falling. Um, Man. This is a situation that we won't see anymore in Heart of the Swarm, Dan, for a number of reasons. Uh, the Tempest? The Mothership Core is the oh. biggest one, because you can just kind of peace out, right? You can just use the Mothership Core to, to recall, recall to another everyone. base. That's right. You're absolutely correct, Ben. From this scenario, uh, Protoss would be able to transport it. But look at Finale fighting back and killing off 
the Broodlord's uh, making sure to salvage some of his army in time. As Sen is out of Infestor energy, no more Infested Terrans. Sen's Remax will be on 11 Infestors, 9 more Corruptors, and I'm sure many of those will be transformed into Broodlords. As uh, Finale has stayed alive, and he's still got some bank, and he's still going to be making a lot more units. Six more Archons were just morphed in. Uh, he, I, I worry that he, he's ignoring his Blink Stalker count. That's going to be very critical at, at points, because ultimately Archons can't reach Broodlords if there's not something else there to sort of buffer that, buffer that damage. Yeah, uh, although look at this from Finale. He's pushing in very aggressively now. He does have a lot of Archons. Queens can transfuse for oh, days, but... Oh, these uh, Infestors are getting shredded right whoa, now. Whoa. Finale uh, doing some massive damage, and Sin miscontrolling his units a little bit. All of a sudden, Sin's in a lot of trouble. He's out of bank, Dan. Uh-oh. He can't build anything, what and happened? I don't know if he has an answer. He just miscontrolled his Infestors. They yeah. all walked into Archons and Colossi. Uh, big Blink also for the Stalkers, being able to pick off a couple of the Broodlords. Uh, remember, Broodlords don't have that great upgrades compared to Protoss. Uh, Investor is able to k land, lash down on some of the stalkers. Sen, his uh, bank has been exhausted. Like you said, it's not like he can remake that army easily. Oh, losing more Investors. The control from Sen, not on point for just a couple of seconds, and as a result, loses an incredible amount of valuable units. Finale in full control. Ah, he's up 50 supply, and even Sin kept his mothership alive. Is scrambling to to come up with an answer, but I don't think he's going to find one. I think in this case, Sin has misstepped too far. Uh, Finale is going to continue to blink forward aggressively. Archon's just dealing with the broodlings easily. And, and the uh, one last vortex catches almost everything. GG yeah, taps out. Finale after 31 minutes. Nice play there on Cloud Kingdom by Finale. Really patient, barely. Um, salvaging that fight in the top left-hand corner of the map for a long time. I thought that was a sure win for Sin, but. Finale does turn it around with good use of Psionic Storm, with good positioning, and ultimately uh, surrounds and crushes that, that army of Sin. Really, really impressive play from Finale. Ties up the Series 1-1. Guys, there is one final map to determine who wins this group. That last one was sponsored by Stamps.com. House of free postage from your PC. Available at nesl.tv slash p slash stamps. Do not go anywhere. Game 3 when we get back.